In this lab, you created two managed instance groups in the US Central One region, along with firewall rules to allow HTTP traffic to those instances and TCP traffic from the GCP health checker. Then you configured and tested an internal load balancer for those instance groups. You can stay for our lab walkthrough, but remember that GCP's user interface can change, so your environment might look slightly different. So here I'm in the GCP console, and in this lab, similar to other labs, we've actually pre-created some resources for you. Um, you can explore those, again, if you go to navigation menu, and then go to deployment manager. You'll see a deployment here. We created a network with two subnets and some firewall rules. We can also just explore those by navigating to VPC network. That's what the lab instructions actually mention. So I can click there. I already have the default network. And here's that extra network I've created with the two subnets. And I also have some file rules for those right here to allow ICMP and SSH and RDP. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create some more file rules. Uh, we're gonna create one for HTTP. And then we're also going to create some for the health check. So let me just click create firewall rule. And this is gonna be fairly similar to what we already did for the HTTP load balancer lab. The big difference is we now have our own network that we're gonna apply this to. Um, we're also gonna have target tags, load balancer backend, IP ranges, we want HTTP from anywhere and HTTP would be TCP 80. So we can click Create, and then we're just gonna repeat the same thing for the health checker. So let me copy the name of the file rule, apply it to the right network, have the load balancer backend as the target tag. Now the IP ranges, we're gonna copy them one by one in here. So let me paste one. Hit space, and let me grab the other one and paste that as well. And um, for now, I'm just gonna do all ports under TCP, but you could be a little bit more specific depending on what you want your health checker to look for. So let's click Create. And now we're gonna configure the instance templates and instance groups. So let me navigate to Compute Engine and then Instance Templates. And uh, we're going to create a template in there and just call it instance template one. Let me click create. Uh, it's actually the name that's already in there. Then I can expand management security disk networking. Now a couple things. Uh, first of all, in the HTTP load balancer, we had a custom image. In this case, we're actually gonna set up a startup script. So under the metadata, I'm gonna provide as a key the startup script URL. And in a cloud storage bucket that's publicly accessible, we've placed a startup file. And you could go in there and you could actually review that and the link to that is in the lab. Then I'm gonna go to networking. I've created all these firewall rules. They apply to specific network tags and they're also for a specific network. So let me make sure I have the right network selected and select the network tag. And this is gonna be for subnet A. So now I can click create. And then we're gonna create a, another instance template for subnet B. So let me just wait for this to be created and then I'm just gonna create another one from there by selecting it and then clicking copy. It's gonna change the name automatically and the main difference is I now need to make sure I select the different subnet. This is gonna be for subnet B, and then I click, click Create as well. So once we have these up, we can now create the managed instance groups. So let me navigate to instance groups and start up by creating our first one. Let's just call it instance group one. This is going to be a single zone. It's gonna be use central 1A. Um, we're gonna use instance template one. And we're going to select the, this to be based on CPU usage. Let's set 80 
as usage, minimum of one, maximum of five. And I could change the cooldown period, for example, to 45 seconds. And um, now I can click Create. You could also attach a health check here or just attach that later to the load balancer. So let me click Create, and we're going to repeat the same for the instance group two. And this is going to be now another one. Uh, it's going to be based on the other instance template, also in US Central 1. Let's do that in B, for example. Um, change the target CPU usage to match what we had earlier of 80, maximum of 5, cool line of 45. And then we can go ahead and create that as well. So if I click on VM instances now, I should already have an instance from the first instance group. And if I come back here, um, I had to refresh to see that other one. We can see that the other instance is now being created for the instance group two. So we can you know, verify again that they're being created here. So here we see we have now one instance group each. So now what we can do is um, we're gonna create a utility VM um, to navigate to these instances. And so we can see also, by the way, um, if we look at their internal IP addresses, that they're both part of a different CIDR range. And if I click on NIC0 here, we can see uh, which network interface this is part of. You can see it's part of subnet A. That's correct. And if I click on the other one, we can see this is part of subnet B. Okay, so each subnet now has an instance group in it. So let me create another instance. This is going to be our utility VM. Now an internal load balancer is regional, so I want to use the same region. We could use a different zone, let's say US Central 1F. I need a very small machine only for this. And for, um, I want to make sure this is in the right network, so let me expand this option down here, networking, and make sure that this is in my right network. Um, I have the choice of the two different subnets I have in there. Let's leave it subnet A. And um, if I want to match this the, to the network diagram that we have, I can specify the actual internal IP. So instead of ephemeral automatic, I can choose ephemeral custom and then just type in that IP address. And again, this is just to match that network diagram that we have. I can click done on that. And then I can go ahead and create that. Now, um, the lab instructions say, you know, make sure that the IP addresses that you have match the lab instructions. This is because these are the first available IP addresses. Um, again, the first IP or first and second is reserved, as well as the last and second to last. So that's why we start with a dot two here. And here we have a dot 50 because we defined that. So uh, now I can go SSH to the utility VM and all the curl commands are based on these two IPs. So if yours are different, uh, you maybe want to see if you have some other instances that you need to delete first. And I'm going to curl first to this uh, first IP here. So let me just copy that directly from the lab instructions. And uh, this is uh, what's displayed here is just the page that we've set up for these instances. This comes directly from the startup script. And it's just telling me the IP address where I'm coming from. Well, I'm coming from this in the utility VM. It has the name that's telling me that it's coming to this instance, and it tells me the region and zone. And I can repeat the same for the other instance. And it's now telling me, again, from the same address, but a different instance and a different zone. And this is going to be really useful for when we have the internal load balances set up, and we call the load balance IP itself uh, we should be able to see that if we curl several times that we're kind of hopping between the different backends that we have established. So we can actually exit out of here for now. And what we're going to do now is configure the internal load balancer. So to do that, I'm going to go to the navigation menu, go to network services, load balancing. We're going to create a load balancer. This is going to be a TCP load balancing. So let me start that. It's going to be only 
between VMs. This is an internal load balancer. When I do that, it restricts me to be regional. We covered that in the slides, that the internal load balancer is regional. So let me click Continue. And then I'll give it a name. Let's just call it my internal load balancer. We are going to configure the backend. Um, specifically, this is in a specific region, which is the central one. Uh, the network is my internal app. And then the instance group, we are going to pick first instance group one. Click done. And then add another backend, which is going to be instance group two. And click done for that. Now, uh, we didn't create a health check earlier. We can do that here now. So let me just go create a health check. Just call it my internal bound health check, TCP 80. That's great. And here we again have the health, the criteria, how often it's going to check what the interval is, the timeout, and how it's going to define if a backend is healthy or unhealthy. So let's save and continue that. And we can see that we have a blue check mark. This is all set up. So now I can click on the front end configuration. The subnetwork, let's, for example, put this in subnet B. Um, for internal IP, we could actually reserve a static internal IP address. Let's give that a name. It's just called my internal advanced IP. And um, rather than assigning automatically, we could choose our own uh, because it's just an internal IP and we could match this again to the network diagram. So it's going to be 10.10. .10 30.5. Let's reserve that. And then we're going to finish the configuration for the load balancer by setting the port here to 80. And then we're going to click done. And now we can review and finalize this. We have our two backends. Uh, we see the auto scaling on that. We see the zones. Um, we see, and we have the front end itself. So we have the exact IP address. The way we can then access this internal load balancer. So let me click create, and then let's wait for the load balancer to be created before we move on to the next step. So here we are. I actually click refresh, and we can see that the load balancer is all set up. Now we specified the IP address, so I don't have to grab it from here. Instead, I'm gonna go back to my Compute Engine instances and use the Utility VM to navigate to our Load Balancer IP. So I'm just going to curl that. And um, since I had that startup script on the back end that uh, defines which instance I'm looking at, this is now going to give me some more information. So I'm going to curl the IP address. And the first time I did it, you can see it um, targeted instance group 2. So let's run that one more time, instance group 2 again. Scoop two again. Um, let's maybe run the command a couple more times, and let's see if we can get uh, a couple different backends. So here, I run it a couple times. We can see that's two, 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 two. Then it's got one, two, 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 one. Um, so we can certainly see that it is load balancing between the different backends that we have, and that's the end of the lab.